Hey everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed, the season one series. We are continuing with The Real Housewives of Potomac, season one, episode four, Desperately Seeking Marriage. Ugh, why do I think I know who this is about? Let him go, Katie. Let him go. This episode opens with Karen and Giselle. They are at that regional airport where Karen is going to learn how to fly a plane, as most of us do when we become empty nesters. We become pilots. Side note, I don't think Karen gets the irony of her surprise that her flight instructor is a female. She's like, oh, a girl flight instructor. How wonderful. Next, Ashley is meeting Katie and her wild children at a playground. Side note, Ashley chose a form-fitting white lace dress for this occasion. (laughs) Okay. I should also mention that she brought her dog that was not allowed in the playground, and so she tied it to a fence. Not my favorite part of that scene. Back to the airfield, the criteria that Karen is looking for in a pilot is um, that they're hot. Basically, Karen just wants some eye candy. As I think about it, that may have been the real reason she was disappointed in the female instructor. She gets taken out to where the planes are, and she wants to choose hers. First, she wanted at least two engines, but this girl said, um, actually, they're all single-engine planes. Oh, Karen was not so sure about that, because safety first. But this flight instructor said, actually, a single-engine plane is much safer. So, you know, good to see Karen did her homework. I just think it's hilarious to me. I love the idea of Karen as a pilot. All right, so they go out to the planes, and, uh, you know, she wants to know what year the plane is. And uh, so she finds one that she likes, and she takes a water bottle out of her bag and starts to um, bless it with holy water. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, back at the playground, Ashley is being punched in the face and kicked in her white lace dress by one of Katie's feral children. Looks super fun. Ashley tells her that she is having a party for her 27th birthday, and the theme is Big Kitty Bash. Katie says that she has a leopard dress that she'll wear. Katie also tells us that she told Andrew that it is not a good look for the two of them to not be married. She's trying everything, you guys. Then Ashley tells Katie that she did kind of a deep dive on Google on Katie, Giselle, and Robin. I don't know why she didn't look up Karen and Sharice, but she looked up these three women on Google. Katie's like, oh, really? What did you find out about me? And she said, well, I found out that you were dating Russell Simmons. And Katie's like, yeah. And now you're with Andrew. (laughs) But the important part here is that she tells Katie she found out that Robin and Juan are filing for bankruptcy. Yes, according to whatever article Ashley saw on the internet, they have to... (laughs) They have $25 in their bank account. I just think the amount is hilarious. I don't know. Like, just to imply that all they have is $25 to their name. Ashley wonders if that's why Robin has been so standoffish toward her. Next, we are at Sharice's house, and she's playing basketball with her son. Now I don't know how many kids she has, because I didn't think she had any. And then we saw, like, I think two daughters in gymnastics. Now she's playing basketball with her son, and maybe there's even another son. I don't know. In any case, uh, a friend of hers comes over. They sit down and have a little heart-to-heart, and this is when we find out that things are actually not so great with Charissa's marriage. I feel bad. You know that her husband is a coach at Rutgers University, and that's in, I think, New Jersey. And they live, of course, in Potomac, Maryland. So he came home to see their son's basketball game, I guess. And she said that he went back already and that, in fact, she was taking a nap when he left to go back to New Jersey. He didn't wake her. He didn't say goodbye 
nothing. Her friend asked her when she was going to New Jersey, and she said, well, the kids are going Friday. The kids. So it's not looking great. She makes the analogy that Eddie is married to his job and that she's the mistress. And she said, well, not even because at least the mistress gets something. And you guys, this is the saddest part. She said, when we first got together, we didn't have anything. And now we have a lot of things, but I wish we could go back to the way it was. She starts crying. Her friend hugs her. She said she's lonely, but she's not sure that she wants to keep fighting for her marriage. She also said that she loves Eddie and that her happiness is having her whole family together. So why doesn't she move to New Jersey? I don't understand that. There's got to be a reason, right? Now we are at lunch with Giselle and her girls and Jamal, her ex-husband, the father of the girls. You know, the cheating pastor. Yeah, they apparently get along well and they co-parent together well. Oh, her, do- her 10-year-old daughter's name is Grace and the 9-year-old twins are Angel and Adore. I love those names because I love those girls. They're so sweet. Giselle tells us that no matter what, Jamal Bryant is family, and she's happy about that. God, it reminds me of Dorinda. John will always have a seat at my table. In Giselle's confessional, she said, I don't secretly want to get back with Jamal. If I did, he'd be sitting right here. (laughs) She said, I enjoy doing other things, like other people. I think Giselle is probably horrible, but I still love her so much because she makes me laugh. She and Karen are like standout favorites for me. You know who I don't love? Katie. I'll get to that in a minute. But right now we are with Karen back at the regional airport with Ray and Raven this time because now it's Karen's time to go up in the plane for the first time. You guys, this is just too funny, but... The plane that she blessed with the blood of Jesus is unavailable. (laughs) So she just has to go up in another one. Oh, my God. But it's all good because, as Karen says, I look at that hot pilot and I knew I was in good hands. (laughs) Really? She has such a strange judge of competency. (laughs) Okay, now, Katie, we are at her house. May is the nanny to the kids. Did I mention that May was also at the playground? So I'm not saying May is a very good nanny, but she's a nanny nonetheless. She is also a lesbian, which Katie loves because I love her energy. (sighs) Okay. And I'm starting to hate your energy, Katie. Okay, I got this all wrong, I believe, because Katie... All right, I don't know what's happening. Katie and the kids and her nanny are moving into Andrew's townhouse. Well, why? I may have been mistaken about the house on the 13th hole of the golf course. Maybe that was Andrew's townhouse because I have no clue why she, her two children, and her nanny would all move into Andrew's house. Anyway, I don't know where Andrew is at this point, but Katie has some guys there to do some light construction work for her. First of all, she wants to put a door on that windowless room in the basement where they've stuffed her nanny. There's like a built-in bar and a TV from the 1970s. I don't know. This thing is huge. And she wants to give her some privacy. Isn't that sweet of Katie. So they want to put a door on her room. And then also this room that's an exercise room of Andrew's, Katie would like to make it a space for her to be girly. I am most confused by Katie. I mean, I hate Andrew. Let's not make any mistake there. But Katie is so annoying. Now we head over to Robin's house, and her kids are bratty, too. She's trying to give them dinner, and they're like, ew, I'm not, this is gross. Anyway, uh, she's heading out to work because Robin works for a PR firm, 
And they put on these events that a lot of her friends in the inner circle are attending. And Robin has to kind of work the events, I guess. So I don't know if she was implying that it was embarrassing or... I don't know. Anyway, this is like the second time that she has talked about money a little bit. And of course, we know they only have $25 in the bank. <laughs> so, But she has to go to work. I don't know where Juan is, but she has uh, her friend, Uncle Gilbert. They kids call him. Side note, Uncle Gilbert is cute. Let me put it this way. If he was a pilot, Karen would get in his plane. <laughs> He's very cute. Anyway, he's there to babysit the kids and she's off to work. We cut over to Sharice's house and she's just walking through the house with her little dogs and locking the front door. And she's like, oh, this was unlocked. I'm glad I checked. And she's a little spooked because the kids are in New Jersey with Eddie and she doesn't like those times that they're there because she's all alone in this big house and it's a little scary. Well, Karen called and asked her how she was doing, and she said, do you want me to come over? And Cherise said, sure. And she goes, all right, I'm going to ask Katie and Giselle to come over too. So they all come over to Cherise's to keep her company. And they're sitting around chatting and gossiping, and Giselle tells them all that Ashley, I think they talked about Ashley's birthday party coming up and who's going, and Giselle thinks it's like a little teeny bopper party because the theme, Big Kitty, is like... She thinks that's very juvenile. She said that when she first met Ashley, she told her that her man has a large penis. Okay, what didn't she tell? Because you guys were grilling her like the Spanish Inquisition. Are you mixed race? What race is your husband? How old is your husband? How old are you? I mean, the the questions were coming kind of fast and furious. So it doesn't even surprise me that she revealed the size of her husband's penis. (laughs) That just seems kind of like, yeah, that was probably part of the questioning process. Giselle thinks that that by telling others about the size of your man's private parts, you are inviting others to want to sit on his private parts. (laughs) Karen wholeheartedly agrees with that. It's like putting your man's penis on Facebook. Why am I giving Karen a Southern accent? I guess because she's so proper. I don't know where it's coming from, but I keep wanting to do her with a Southern accent. Anyway, she said, it's like putting your man's penis on Facebook and saying, look, this is what I've got. And every woman that sees it and likes it is going to find your man. And then, sort of out of the blue, Katie reveals that she likes all people, young, old, male, female. Then Katie tells the women that Ashley Googled them and told her that Robin and Juan were having financial difficulties. Katie said, I don't think you should talk about people's financial situations as she's telling the others about Robin's. I mean, I know she's just trying to out Ashley, but by doing so, she is also spreading the information about Robin and Juan, right? Cherise thinks that many people put on a facade to cover up what's really going on and that she knows this because that's what she's doing. And then she shares with the others that her marriage is at a crossroads. She's been married for almost 18 years, but this trouble has been going on for the past three. Giselle, I mean, for right now at least, is being very like kind and supportive. And she said, you know, I've been there. So if you ever want to talk, if you ever need to curse, feel free to come over and we can have a cussing session. Ugh, I hate Katie and Andrew. Every time it's a scene with them now, I'm immediately like disgusted and I want this part over with. So he comes home and apparently he was just on a vacation. It looks like he had golf clubs with him. So I don't know, isn't his house on a golf course? It wouldn't seem like you'd have to get on a plane and go somewhere to golf, but whatever. He comes home and Katie is so excited to show him what she did to his house while he was gone. But you guys, 
Oh my God. May's bedroom? I thought it was going to be that whole side of the basement that had the bar and the TV. No. No. Basically what they did was they partitioned off the bed. So her bedroom is basically a bed and maybe there's room for a little nightstand. The bar is on the outside of this like partitioned wall. And on the other side of the partitioned wall, where the bar is, Katie has put all of Andrew's workout equipment. Oh, that's going to be so much fun for May when she's in bed sleeping, and Andrew is huffing and puffing and sweating on some elliptical machine right outside her door. Okay, I'm almost angry now, because upstairs, in the room that had Andrew's exercise equipment, is an actual bedroom. And now it's Katie's dressing room. It's not even cutely decorated. It's got a huge closet, a vanity, a window, all things that may have been nice for your live-in nanny. But no, let's shove her in a corner of the basement and block it off and then put Andrew's sweaty body in <laughs> on the other side. The selfishness is insane. This is an actual extra bedroom that you people had, and you can't give it to your nanny. You could have used that little partitioned off section of the basement for your dressing room, Katie. But almost the very worst part of all of this is that there is a stupid sign hanging on the door to that room that says, the missus. Feel free to throw up. Well, surprise, surprise, Andrew hates it as much as I do. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's not pretty. It's so plain, and it, it looks dark, even though there's a window in there, but maybe it's because they have the window closed for filming. I don't know. It's sort of like grays and silver. I don't love it. What a waste of space is kind of my point. Okay, now it's time for Ashley's Big Cat Bash. The ladies are all getting ready. Giselle is trying to pick out what she's wearing, and she calls Robin. What are you wearing to Ashley's teeny bop party? And Robin kind of laughs, and she goes, I don't know. She goes, I'm not wearing an animal print, though. <laughs> then, of course, Giselle tells Robin that Ashley Googled her and found out that she and Juan are filing for bankruptcy. Now, of course, Robin's not sure she wants to go. That would have sealed the deal for me. <laughs> no, I'm not going. The party is at L2, which is the club where Ashley met her husband, Michael. If you remember, she was the bartender, and he was a part owner, and, uh, and she would watch him on the closed-circuit TVs. <laughs> Still seems very creepy to me. Karen and the notorious BBG... Black Bill Gates arrive, and for some reason, Karen likes Ashley. She believes that she can, like, take her under her wing and mold her, I think. Oh, oh no. It's a cash bar. Oh, that does not have a place in Karen's world of proper etiquette. I'm sure. What the hell? Katie and Andrew can't keep their hands off each other. It's so bizarre and disgusting. Of course, the two people that I hate the most, I now have to watch them make out. Ugh. <laughs> you know, honestly, I have always believed that that more than anything else was a sign of trouble in a relationship. To feel the need to blatantly display desire for one another. I mean, unless the relationship is brand new, that seems like your overcompensating. Even Giselle thinks it's weird. <laughs> I mean, like, go home. What would possess a couple to go to a party and then do that right in front of their friends? Like, they're all sitting on the couches, and these two are just, like, going at each other like animals? What, what is the point of that? Anyway, Giselle and Robin can't watch anymore, so they get up and they go to the bar. There's a little sign with two signature drinks for this party, $15 each. <laughs> uh, they both sound delicious, though. I will say that. But I'm with Karen. I mean, don't invite people to your birthday party and ask them to pay for drinks. I mean, it wasn't dinner or anything, so I don't think they were providing food either. 
What were they were just providing nothing? I don't know. Oh jeez. Ashley's just arriving now and she's got a little leopard top on and ears and Michael is dressed like Crocodile Dundee. I don't know. It's a little on the nose for an Aussie, mate. I can't do an Australian accent at all. It does not stop me from trying, though, does it? The best part is that Katie takes a quick peek at Michael's package, and she's like, eh, nothing extraordinary going on down there. (laughs) Now Ashley finds Robin and Giselle at the bar. In Robin's confessional, she said, Ashley needs to go back home, pick up her crayons, color in her coloring book, and stay the hell out of my life. Robin, she can also Robin. Robin barely moves her lips when she talks. She does confront Ashley about Googling her, and Ashley goes, well, I mean, you're a bit boring and standoffish, and I thought, well, maybe there's a reason for it. So I Googled you. almost like the best response to that. I don't know. You're you're kind of a jerk, so I wanted to see if there was a reason for it. (laughs) Oddly enough, this actually kind of works because Robin then tells her that she's been hurt in the past by someone that she trusted, a friend who betrayed her, and that she's very guarded now especially when she meets new people. Ashley said, well, you know what? I have no bad intentions toward you, or so maybe you do just need to like get to know me better. And she did apologize to Robin for Googling her. And uh, and I don't know for now, anyway, they seem like they're okay. In her confessional, Robin said, I don't believe Ashley had any malicious intent, but baby girl better watch what she says. <laughs> Now all the ladies are sitting together on the couches, and Andrew and Katie are still going at each other. Ashley blows out her candles, and they all go outside in front, and Michael pulls up in a white Porsche that is her birthday present. Karen says, Ashley may have lost five points with the cash bar, but she gained three for the Porsche. Um, excuse me, but flaunting an expensive gift in front of all your guests who you're making pay for their own drinks makes it worse in my book. I mean, were there even hors d'oeuvres? What did you give your friends? I don't know. That display of the car at the end just proves that you could have afforded an open bar. So, I don't know. Anyway, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and leave a comment down below. What did you think of this episode? That's it for me. Wear a mask. Stay safe. I love you guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.